Finally, I've completed the sacred circle. Now, to summon Bobby Konami. Hey, I'm Bobby Konami. What do you want? My Dark Lord Bobulus, I have a humble request. Can you make the sacred beast monsters easy to summon? Yeah, we can do that. What else do you want? Oh. Yeah, no, that's all I had. I didn't really... think that far ahead. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. With the hype surrounding the Shadal structure deck reaching a fever pitch, it can be hard to remember the original poll wasn't particularly decisive. In second place was the Sacred Beasts, those miserable GX retrains of god cards, and Konami thought the vote was so funny, they decided to give these catastrophic copies their own new support. Now that we've seen it, it's time to brew with these big bungai. Presenting Sacred Beast. So here's the list, and... Yeah, this is definitely still in the, uh, early stages of development. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is a one-stop shop for deck building, deck uploading, card searching, and strategy articles, some of which are written by yours truly. I'm proud to represent them, and I encourage any player interested in deck building to check out their website at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now, back to the beasts. The sacred beasts were, uh, never meant to all be played in the same deck. They're completely disparate monsters that, in classic GX fashion, all do unrelated, individually weak things. Haman can be summoned by tributing continuous spells, Yuria can be summoned by tributing continuous traps, and because they ran out of ideas, Raviel can be summoned by tributing fiend-type monsters. Their effects range from incredibly impactful, summoning one token when your opponent performs a normal summon, to downright devastating, deal 1,000 damage to your opponent's life points if you destroy their monster by battle. Move over, Apa Cleefort Towers. Yuria's got set spells and traps to destroy. Because these monsters are about as exciting as one of my vlogs, making a deck for them was a huge undertaking. Thankfully, Konami was up to the challenge, and decided while they weren't comfortable retraining the retrains, except for Raviel, who did get one, but it isn't very good, they can at least make these clunky critters a little easier to summon. Enter Dark Summoning Beast, a Stratos for this non-archetype, Chaos Summoning Beast, which summons from hand, and the Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed, a Searcher and Combo Starter all in one. It's also got a hilarious Armatile OTK going second by way of a one and a half card combo featuring Chaos Core. That's not all Konami has bequeathed to the beasts, however. They've also each got new payoffs, the best of which is Cerulean Skyfire, a spell and trap effect negator provided you control Hamon. Finally, we're on their conditional tribal skill drain, Sacred Beast Awakening, to round out the archetype. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our beasts. Two Hamon, two Ravio, and a Yuria. Yuria's bad outside of dedicated builds, but I want to screw around with Armatile setups. After that are our summoning beasts, three Dark, three Core, three Beckoning, and three Chaos. Next is a smattering of staples, Allure, Desires, Upstart, Foolish, Called, followed by three Skyfire, three Seven Spirit Gates, the Searchable Fallen Paradise, and the Verteable Dimension Fusion Destruction. For traps, we're on Skill Drain and three Awakening. In the extra, we're on a bunch of monsters we will never summon. Armatile, Liba, Max, Astrum, Boral Sword, Opelousa, Nightmares Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus, Barricade Borg, Mascarena, and the four important ones, Verte, Linkuri, and two Almirage. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against... Ah, uh... You know what, you don't need to see this one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Our first match is up against Flame Noble Knights. Now these cards are good, but I haven't seen anyone do anything good with them yet. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army, and then Normal Summon a copy of Noble Nine Brothers, Special Summoning an Ogier from hand, and a Roland as well. They'll then Link Summon a copy of Isolde, and use Isolde's effect, both 1 and 2, to Special Summon a Warrior from deck, before Synchro Summoning a Vanguard Roland. They'll get Ogier attached alongside Olivier, set one card, and then pass it back to us. I think we... win from this position? For turn, we draw a copy of Dark. We're going to lead with a copy of Seven Spirit Gates. It gets Ash Blossomed, and I think we have it. We're going to Normal Summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast, and then use Dark Beckoning Beast's additional Normal in order to get Chaos on the field, then Link Summon an Almirage, targeting the Chaos and using its effect to send all the Sacred Beasts to the Graveyard. We'll use Seven Gates for another Material on board so we can go to Verte Anaconda and Fusion Summon Armatile using our Graved Monsters. That's lethal! 
So that's what the deck does on the draw. Now how does it perform on the play? We'll find out against our second opponent, playing True Draco. We're going to lead with a copy of Seven Spirit Gates, and normal summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast in order to get a copy of Dark Two Hand. We'll normal summon a Chaos before Link summoning a copy of Almiraz, triggering the effect of Seven in order to get the Dark out of our hand and the Haman to our side of the field. We'll activate Dark's Graveyard Effect for a Raviel, then we'll tribute Chaos for it. We'll go ahead and add a Fallen Paradise to hand. We are looking for the Continuous Trap, but we'll settle for the Continuous Spell. Our opponent's going to lead with a Pot of Duality. Off the top, they find a Terraforming, which is great news for us, because after they Terraforming and activate Draconic Diagram, we can negate it and... Wait, what? Oh my god, it negates effects, not activations. Oh, curse my illiteracy! Okay, well, they'll draw a card off of this heritage and pass it back to us. We still should be able to get in for big damage here, even despite the monarchs are up to they flip in the draw phase. We're going to activate Fallen Paradise. This triggers the Ignis, but I'm not too beat up about it. We're going to activate Unleashed twice before activating Skyfire again. Normal summoning a Chaos, getting the Saman out of our hand. Link summoning a Unicorn for more attack points and attacking. They're going to activate Apocalypse outside of the damage step so I can negate it with the effect of Skyfire. We get over their last remaining monster and provided they don't find one more, we might just take this. For turn they draw, there can be only one. They'll normal summon a copy of Inspector Border. We're going to negate the diagram. They'll go for the Apocalypse. Draco Phoenix is going to destroy our Fallen Paradise, and using Heritage, they find... Ignis! Are you serious? How many monsters does this deck play? Well, at the very least, we have called for the Ignis, so it doesn't pop off all the way, but our monsters have no attack <laughs> and Skyfire triggers. Hilarious. Uh, they're going to activate. There can be only one. We'll overlay for Gustav Max. At the very least, it can attack over our opponent's monster, but we need at least two things to do so. We'll activate Dark's Effect for another Raviel, but we have nothing to negate the Apocalypse, and as soon as they go for it, I know the game is over. They're going to Heritage away our Skyfire. We can activate it again, but we're forced to pass. For turn, our opponent draws a copy of Maiden, of all things. They'll diagram it away for a Heritage, and I'll concede. So, it's time for Game 3, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Because our deck isn't... Super competitive, to put it lightly. I figured I'd give myself a break and play against Thunder. Let's see if we can take it down. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Desires, and off the top we draw yeah, some relevant stuff. We'll go Chaos Summoning Beast into Haman, and then get a Fallen Paradise, which draws absolutely nothing. We'll set two and pass it back to our opponent. We'll activate Awakens in draw step. Our opponent's going to lead with a Thunder Dragon and a Pot of Desires of their very own, which finds them an aloof lupine. Must be nice. They'll then activate the effect of Roar and the effect of Dark in order to special summon a copy of Matrix and add a copy of Fusion to hand. We're going to gain some life points before they activate the effect of Phoenix. Phoenix, you fool! You've cut yourself off Link! arrows. They'll special a duo, we'll gain some more life, and they'll activate fusion. Ha oh, master rule five. Yes, okay. They'll activate thunder dragon, we'll call it by the grave. Enjoy your zero pops this turn, fool. They'll then, oh, link summon a Borlo dragon. Well, that's one way to out Haman. They'll pass it back to us and Yikes, this is actually kind of problematic. We're going to activate Pot of Desires, and we are in drastic danger of decking ourselves. We'll make a Raviel. They'll take 500 less than they would otherwise, but that Haman's going to the graveyard, and all of their stuff is repeatable. They're going to normal summon a copy of Aloof Lupine. We'll activate Raviel in response, I suppose. Unfortunately, they're going to trigger both the effect of Roar and the effect of Dark again. Ugh, every turn with this deck. The Mystic Mine is in hand, by the way. They just... I, I don't know, don't respect me enough to activate it. They'll activate Hawk to get a copy of Roar, and then you know the rest. They'll go into BLS. That's going to be a fantastic way to clear our board, banishing our Raviel, and then activating a Thunder Dragon in main phase two. They'll pass it back to us, and I don't think I have any way to make anything happen. We're going to normal summon a copy of Chaos. Maybe that's enough. They're going to Fusion, and I'll concede. So it's time for game two, and oh god, did we draw every Garnet in our deck? Well, for what it's worth, our Garnets are incredibly powerful cards, so maybe this will work out. We're going to lead with a copy of Allure of Darkness, kind of putting my faith in the heart of the cards here. It works out, we find a Pot of Desires and a Dark Beckoning Beast. All according to plan, baby! We'll Seven Spirit Gates and then Link Summon an Almirage, using Gates to get back Dark Summoning Beast, and using its effect to get a Hamon from our deck. We're going to activate Fallen Paradise after getting a Hamon to hand with Dark's second effect, before setting two and passing it back to our opponent. They'll activate Gold Sark, we'll flip Awakening number two, that's the second game in a row we found that. They'll go into Dragon Roar, into Dragon Dark, into Dragon Hawk, into Dragon Roar, into a Link Summon to Nightmare Phoenix. This is the exact same opener! We're going to activate Called by the Grave on the Dark this time. Fantastic that we have a target. Uh, they're going to destroy our copy of Awakening, which I'm not too attached to anyway. They'll go into a Titan, then Link Summon a copy of Soldier of Chaos, ideally to remove my Haman, but I'll just go ahead and tribute this Almirage, enjoy destroying nothing in the battle phase. For turn, we draw another copy of Awakening. We'll activate Unleash. They're going to activate the effect of Titan in response in a longer chain so that it doesn't resolve. We'll then use Fallen Paradise, and oop, we drew Dark Beckoning anyway. We're going to Normal Summon a copy of Chaos, use its effect for another Haman. We'll activate Skyfire 
Spitfire and go to Battle Phase. We'll attack into our opponent's copy of Titan, which does not have protection, remove both of our opponent's monsters from the board, go into an Almirage, set one, and pass it back. For turn, our opponent draws an evenly matched. What a rip, but unfortunately, Skyfire can negate it. They'll fusion into a copy of Roar, activate Roar to get back fusion, use fusion to go into a copy of Titan, and then pass. We should be fine here. We're going to use Sacred Beast Awakening second effect in order to get the other Sacred Beast Awakening back. We'll normal summon a copy of Beckoning Beast for another Skyfire and go to battle phase, walking over our opponent's Titan and eating the remainder of their life points. So it's time for that old important game three at... Oh my god. <laughs> our hand! It's so good! Oh, we, we finally drew well! Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's remain calm. Check this out. We're going to lead with a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast in order to get ourselves a copy of Seven Spirit Gates. Our opponent's going to chain a copy of Thunder Dragon Dark. Fine, get it out of your hand. We'll activate Gates for a copy of Chaos, which we'll normal summon with our extra normal before Link summoning an Al Mirage and using the effect of Gates to get this Dark to our side of the field and the Haman from our deck. We're going to use Dark's Grave Effect for a Raviel, then we'll use the effect of Chaos to get it to our side of the field. We'll activate Fallen Paradise, draw two cards, and set three, two of which are Skill Drains. Beat that! No. No, it's not fair. It's not fair! We finally opened well! Well, fine. We'll banish down to the Called by the Grave because we have to negate the effect of Dark. We literally cannot beat a copy of Titan, which they're able to make anyway. With the remaining material on board, they'll go into a Verte and make a second one before passing it back to us. For turn, we draw a copy of Chaos. We need the Seven Spirit Gates to resolve, but of course they have the Matrix in hand, so they're going to be able to destroy it before it can resolve. We'll normal summon Chaos Core, I figure... Maybe it'll fog us for a turn, and then I remember that Titan doesn't even target, so its effect won't activate anyway. <sighs> Alright. Well, I know when I'm beaten. So, we're back with the deck, and... Well, we always knew it was going to be bad, but at least it was also fun. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One... It's consistent. I know! I was surprised too, but the deck's extremely capable of making between one and two Sacred Beasts no matter what you open. Two, the deck does something that no other deck is really capable of right now, barfing out extremely big bunguses. I'm talking absolute chonkers. Three, I was afraid when this archetype was spoiled that there wouldn't be enough cards to facilitate a complete deck, but there's definitely enough playables to manage something halfway competent. And the cons. One, the Armatile stuff is terrible. Any deck that can manage two four-star monsters can make a 10,000 attack game ender, and you're putting all of your eggs in the Armatile basket if you even so much as vaguely gesture in the direction of our purple pugilist. Two, the setups are only really powerful if they're backed by Skyfire. Otherwise, you're just spending your first turn making very large monsters. While their tribal skill drain isn't bad, it's extremely hard to make live. And three, it doesn't really have any natural immunity to the wealth of extremely powerful single cards that currently plague the format. In the face of evenly matched, super polymerization, and mystic mine, these dinguses certainly feel dated. All in all, it's not going to be as impactful as the Shadal structure was, but who cares? I'm definitely building something with the Sacred Beasts on release, no matter how unplayable they are. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, Protagify, Tyler Slacks, Mika Reichman, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Dan the Man Hoban, Bleb, Blake Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blast It, Burrito Man 93, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Meat Moto 27, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, and others. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time!